I really, really hate putting holes in my camper, especially on the roof. But can I really just tape my solar panel on? There are a lot of videos on YouTube about using very high bond tape to install solar panels on an RV or camper. So I bought some 3M 5952 very high bond tape, one inch wide. But how much tape is needed? And how do you use it properly? In this video, I'll show you how to use it and provide you some numbers that may help you install your solar panels without drilling into your RV. For static loads, such as hanging on a wall, 3M recommends four inches per pound of weight or force. For my brackets with two inches of the 5259 3M tape, this is one half pound each for the six two inch brackets holding my solar panel. I feel that this recommendation is meant to be a safe bet with both good and questionable surfaces and with little or no attention to surface prep. So I found 3M's technical data sheet for their double sided very high bond tapes and looked a little closer. I've picked out the strength data for 3M's 5952 tape from their data sheet and summarized it here. The fourth column shows the 3M values directly as reported in their data sheet, while the last column on the right shows my conversions of the 3M numbers to represent a two inch by one inch piece of tape as I use under each of my solar panel brackets. I use six of these two inch brackets for my 100 watt panel. Let's focus on 3M's dynamic strength tests for adhesion, tensile strength, and shear strength. The little pictures give you an idea how each test works. These dynamic tests involve moving jaws that pull or shear the tape in a matter of seconds and record the force required. This might apply to hitting a warning pipe at an underground garage, maybe, which I've done, or to a sudden gust of wind. But when we are driving, the shear forces trying to push the panel off the roof last as long as we are driving, more like three to five hours at a time. So this is really more of a static force. And the best comparison to my solar panel case is the static shear test data shown in the top line. When the 3M static shear test data is applied to my two inch bracket, it tells me that it will hold 8.8 .8 pounds for seven days this is way more than the 3M general recommendation we looked at earlier, which amounted to half a pound for my two inch bracket. So which is it? Also, I have little or no shear force nor tensile force on my panel 98 to 99% of the time. And my worst case load happens only for about three to five hours so really, none of these 3M tests tell me what I need to know. Might be time to do my own tests. In this video, I'll estimate the wind load. Then I'll show you the poor man's strength test I did to determine if the very high bond tape is strong enough to hold solar panels on an RV or camper. This is a drawing of my 100 watt panel looking down on it as it might sit on top of my camper with six aluminum brackets, two inches wide. Now I figure I never go over 80 miles an hour, but I may have a headwind of 20 miles an hour. So let's say the maximum wind speed pushing my panel is 100 miles an hour, as if it is sitting at the front of the truck, getting the full force of the wind. It's not, but more on that later. I found a simple formula for the wind load or force pushing the panel. I believe more complicated formulas will give a lower number, so this should be conservative. The force depends on the area of the edge facing the wind, 
the wind speed squared and a drag coefficient. 1.6 for a long narrow edge. The force pushing the panel toward the rear of the camper at 100 miles an hour is about 18 pounds. And there are six brackets showing the load. So each one inch by two inch piece of tape needs to resist three pounds of shear force. But wait, due to the turbulent air cavity formed over the rig at high speed, the wind hitting a solar panel four feet back from the front edge is lower than at the front edge. Models like this one for a semi-truck show this effect. I measured the wind speeds on my camper at the front edge and at the panel four feet back. I found that the wind hitting the solar panel is about 50% lower than the wind hitting the front of the truck at highway speeds. So for a 100 mile an hour design wind, the wind hitting the panel is only about 50 miles an hour and the force on the panel is estimated to be 4.4 pounds instead of 18 pounds total. So for my six brackets, the total load on each two inch piece of tape is 0.73 pounds. This is a bigger load than the half pound that 3M would recommend, but it is smaller than the two inch bracket load of 8.8 .8 pounds based on 3M's seven day static shear test. So I'm still in a quandary. Let's prep some flat surfaces and some brackets and test it. I prepped a painted metal surface on my toolbox and a sheet of aluminum plate, carefully following the 3M instructions. Then I attached brackets with 5952 very high bond tape and loaded them with a water jug filled with a specific weight of water. Let's look at the surface prep first. There are very specific procedures that you should follow to get the best bond. I'll link the 3M spec sheet on that below. It requires very fine grit sandpaper and isopropyl alcohol. Finally, you should seal the tape from the environment with a self-leveling lap sealant to isolate the tape from wet and freezing conditions. Here, I'm sanding both surfaces with 220 grit sandpaper, wiping with 60% alcohol, which I had to dilute from my 90% bottle, then applying at least 15 pounds pressure per square inch. Finally, I'm sealing it from the environment with a self-leveling lap sealant, such as Dicor. I set up a poor man's shear test to see for myself how strong the 3M 5952 tape is. Each test involved a two inch piece of tape, one inch wide. First, I tried various weights for five minute periods in these water jugs until it failed at 75 pounds. The 75 pound test was faulty because the jugs caused the force to pull out and it was more of a peeling test than a shear test. Next, I doubled the 8.8 .8 pound weight based on 3M's seven day shear test and filled the jug to 17.6 pounds. I left that load hanging on the bracket for five and a half hours. Then I had to stop the test. So I only know that it was good for longer than my five hour goal in these tests. Finally, I tried the test with 25 pounds on a bracket attached to an aluminum plate. This one failed at almost exactly five hours, so I met my goal just barely, but it makes me nervous recommending that weight. Let's summarize. This chart compares the estimated wind load and the strength values. The first bar shows a 0.73 pound wind load that I estimated for a single bracket, assuming I use six two inch brackets to hold the panel. The second bar shows the 8.8 .8 pound value based on 3M's seven day static shear test. This is 12 times stronger than the estimated wind load. That's probably good enough. 
and it doesn't rely on any of my strength tests. The third bar represents my 17.6 pound test that held for over five and a half hours. It is double 3M seven day result. This is 24 times the estimated wind load and I like that even better. Now I'm really getting comfortable. The last bar represents my 25 pound test, which failed right at the five hour point. This just meets my goal for duration and is 34 times the estimated worst case wind load. However, it did fail, so I'm going to step back and hang my hat on the 17.6 pound test. Even if my wind load estimate is off by 200%, the 17.6 pound value is still has a safety factor of 12 times. So my conclusions are, first, that 3M's 5952 Very High Bond Tape is plenty strong to hold your solar panel on your RV without drilling any holes. As long as you use enough brackets, I recommend six. As long as your surfaces are very smooth and you follow 3M's surface prep instructions closely. And finally, as long as you seal each bracket totally with a good self-leveling lap sealant. Finally, if you are as conservative as I am, consider finding a nearby no-drill attachment point for a redundant metal attachment or a safety leash. I found existing screws on my vent housing and on the side of my camper roof and tied into those. I hope this information has given you some extra confidence in completing your solar install without drilling any holes in your camper. The 3M information and materials I used are linked below. I have a companion video on my own inexpensive DIY solar install also linked below. Thanks for tuning in.